Good morning and welcome. My name is Paula Bulkeo and I am Eastman's Director of Global, Public and Community Affairs. Before we get started, we've got a few housekeeping items, including a safety moment. There are no drills planned at the Meadowview, so if you do hear an alarm, please proceed to the exits which are clearly marked around this room. Additionally, we ask that everyone follow established social distancing guidelines and please wear a mask throughout the event unless you are speaking at the podium. And finally, as a reminder, this announcement is live and being recorded. We ask that you please remain quiet until we get to the Q&A portion with the media. And please turn off your cell phone ringers to either quiet or vibrate, thank you. Thank you all for joining us for this historic announcement about a sustainability project of significant economic importance for Eastman, the state of Tennessee, and the Tri-Cities region, as well as the global plastics industry. And thank you to the media who are joining us both online and are here in the room. For the media who are joining us online, please note the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. That is where you can submit questions throughout today's presentation. Immediately following the marks, we'll gather your questions and facilitate a brief online Q&A session, which will be followed by an in-person Q&A for members of the media who are here with us on site today. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Eastman Board Chair and CEO, Mark Costa. Got our COVID protocol. All right. Um, so first of all, thank you for all coming. Um, thank you, Paula, for the introduction. Um, it's good to be here um, in such an exciting time uh, for us and for the state and what we're about to discuss and, and build here. When you think about um, what we're doing, you know, it's, it's significant around the, the circular economy, but we can't ignore what we're going through right now first. And one, I appreciate you all following the protocols. It's great to see people wearing masks. I think as leaders, it's important that we demonstrate uh, leadership on safety. As Eastman, we take it very seriously, have invested a lot in it, um, and we need to continue to fight this uh, virus as best as we can. I want to thank the governor for being here today. Um, you know, it's great to have you uh, and to have your support uh, that you've been able to provide us uh, from the state to uh, have this announcement. Um, and we're very much looking forward to talking about it. I want to recognize and acknowledge uh, we have a number of people here from the General Assembly uh, uh, from a variety of different backgrounds and expertise. And thank you for all coming here. Uh, I want to welcome uh, Congressman Congresswoman uh, Harshbarger, um, it's great to have you here. Uh, welcome uh, to the new job. I can only imagine what it's like to be in DC at this moment with uh, all the fun, fan, fun uh, drama that we're going through right now. And we're very much looking forward to your leadership as we go through all this. And I wanna recognize the local community leaders uh, that are here who are always with us as uh, supportive of Eastman and how we work in this community in particular, uh, Mayor Scholl and Mayor Venable from Kingsport and Sullivan County. Uh, it's great to have you here, and I know you'll be making some comments a bit later. Um, so as we think about this, um, it's an interesting time. When you think about George Eastman, and this is our 100-year so, you know, centennial, I don't think he would have ever imagined that Eastman back in 1920 versus where we are today would be who we are, as global as we are, as diverse as we are, and as strong as we are. Um, and it's great to see that uh, progress and innovation uh, that's been the core and heart of Eastman since it began. Um, and I think you know, today and what we're talking about is just taking us to a whole new level of innovation beyond uh, what we've been doing for a long time, especially focused on sustainability and environmentally friendly products is not new to us. Uh, but this is going to be a huge new vector of growth for us uh, in the circular economy. But it's not possible to solve these kind of problems without partnership and support. Uh, these are significant infrastructure investments. Uh, that require collaboration uh, from everyone, including the state in this case, to enable us to succeed. And I'll talk more about that in my comments uh, a little bit later. But with this, I wanna hand it off to Governor Lee to let him make his comments. Uh, and then we'll, I'll come back and make some comments. Thank you, Governor Lee. It's so great to have you here. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mark. And thank you all for attending this morning uh, a, an opportunity for me to be here and to 
talk about uh, not only what's an important and exciting announcement for uh, this region, but important, exciting announcement for the state of Tennessee. And we're grateful for the opportunity to be here uh, to talk about this investment, this exciting uh, decision for Eastman, a great Tennessee company that's been in our state for a hundred years, their decision to invest $250 million in uh, the expansion of and the development of a recycling facility, a methanolysis facility, the largest in the country that will be part of a sustainable economy for America. It is technology that will uh, that will allow us to recycle in ways that have not been done before. It's uh, it, it, again, that technology is not only important for this region, it's important for the state and it's important for America. And so we are proud and grateful and uh, excited about the fact that Eastman has made a decision to make that investment right here in Tennessee. We know that in spite of the fact that Eastman has long been invested in our state, they are, a, a, a global company that has options and have opportunities across the world uh, and choices to make about where they make their investments. But they have chosen to invest this next uh, part of their business right here in Tennessee. It makes me very, very proud. Eastman, since 2013, has invested $1.6 billion in Tennessee with 6,500 employees with 100 years of history and legacy uh, a great global Tennessee company that we are incredibly grateful for. And, you know, it's not just creating jobs and investing dollars in, in our economy. It is about being a part of our community from a state, from a state standpoint. And everyone in this part of, in this part of uh, Tennessee certainly knows that Eastman is a profoundly important part of this community and their continued investment here uh, is a reflection of that. Uh, one other thing I'll say about this. this, this technology, this investment in sustainable technology for the future of our country and our world is unique in that we have a company that's been here for a hundred years and has a history and a legacy and a long past of being a part of Tennessee's economy, but rare is the company that can sustain a hundred year path and yet lay out a bright future uh, in technology for tomorrow. And that's what, we're, that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a company who has been a significant part of yesterday for our state, but is now committing by a major financial investment to being a significant part of Tennessee's tomorrow. So to that, we're grateful. We thank you for Eastman's leadership. We thank you for what it means to this region, a, an incredibly important part of Tennessee's economy uh, is the Upper East economy. And what's happening in this region is very exciting to me. It's very important for the state's economy, but uh, in particular, it's important for the people. And so your, your investment in the people here is, is greatly appreciated. I'm excited to be here. I'm grateful for what you and your leadership team are doing. And um, it, means a lot to, it means a lot to this part of the country. So thank you, sir. Governor Lee, thank you very much uh, for those comments. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alan Borden. I have the privilege as serving as the Deputy Commissioner for the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development. And it certainly is a great day here in Sullivan County, in Kingsport, and in fact, for the entire Tri-Cities region. Every morning when Commissioner Rolfe, myself, and our 100 great colleagues in the Department of ECD get up, we typically have two missions in our minds. One is to recruit new companies and new investment to the great state of Tennessee to help facilitate job creation. Our other mission on a daily basis is to work with 
the great companies in Tennessee, like Eastman, that have invested in Tennessee for many years and have been providing jobs to Tennesseans for many years and assist them in continuing to grow and expand. And that is what this morning, this day is all about here in Tri-Cities. And we could not be more excited, Mark, about the investment that Eastman is making, as the governor said, a very, very significant investment. And it's significant in a lot of ways. One, because of the technology and keeping us right at the forefront of cutting edge technology in the world, but it's also very significant to sustainability uh, on a global basis and to the circular economy. So Mark, we're certainly very appreciative of your continued investment. You know, we have a lot of companies that have been invested in this great state for a lot of years, but Governor, I'm not sure that I, I know of really many that have been invested for a hundred years or longer uh, like Eastman has. So we appreciate that investment. You know, we do a lot of other things in ECD when it comes to recruitment. In the last five years here in the Northeast region alone, I'm pleased to report that we have landed 40 projects in this region representing over 4,700 jobs with a CapEx of a little over $773 million. So what that says to me is that the Northeast region continues to be one of the strongest regions in our great state. We have great companies like Eastman, but we have many other companies that are continuing to, to forge ahead. You know, Mark, it's been said before that things never stay the same for very long. They either move forward or they move backwards. And because of this investment that you guys are putting forth today, it's a clear indication that not only Eastman is moving forward in the global economy and in the world, but also this great region here in the Northeast and the great state of Tennessee. Thank you very much for this investment, sir. So thank you, Alan. Thank you, Governor. I very much appreciate those comments. I, it can't go um, unsaid or, you know, I don't know how to express it enough that Tennessee is a great state to do business. Um, it's incredibly fortunate that 1920, uh, George Eastman decided to put uh, the chemical division uh, here in, in Kingsport. Um, and we had the benefit of this kind of state and this kind of support to grow and innovate uh, into a very global company. Um, and that kind of support and how friendly you are as a state uh, in attracting investment and supporting those who are here to grow is, is, is incredible. I also want to recognize that even in a type, time of trauma, like we're going through right now with the pandemic, I think your state, we have, as a state have done a phenomenal job. When you look at how the vaccine's being rolled out, um, it's incredibly impressive. Uh, I may get this date, data wrong because it's moving so fast, but I think you're in the top five on a per capita basis. And we've got about 12% of the population vaccinated, which is way above uh, the average, uh, especially some of our bigger states who are not doing nearly as good of a job. Uh, so thank you, Governor, because safety is essential part of operating and succeeding as an economy. Um, as we think about this investment, it's, it is significant. You know. Caring about the environment is something that is often said, but a lot of people don't necessarily do something about it in any specific way. And it's been a journey. So if you look at sustainability, uh, which is a combination of many things, you have to have safe products, you wanna minimize your carbon impact on climate, and we don't need to waste a bunch of plastic in the environment, you know, um, and impact the environment with that waste. Right? There's a lot of dimensions to it. Eastman's leaned in heavily on products that are sustainable, environmentally friendly as well as you know safe for years. And it's driven a lot of our growth. We're committed to improving our energy footprint as well. When we think about climate, we've taken 
our uh, greenhouse gas intensity down 20% in the last decade. And we just set a very aggressive goal to take it down another third in the next decade by 2030 to get us on a path to being carbon neutral by 2050. That is not easy, but it is the right thing to do and it improves our energy footprint and improves our carbon footprint. And circular economy is part of how we do that. But climate and, and, and safety are things a lot of people can work on. The circular economy isn't you know, available for everyone to solve. It requires a few companies that are uniquely positioned to be leaders in this. And we are one of those companies. We have 300 million tons of plastic waste a year globally, 300 million. You know, 40% of that, you know, 25% of it roughly ends up, you know, 20% ends up in uh, being incinerated, 40% plus is, is landfilled, 20% escapes into the environment. This is not acceptable. You know, it's not acceptable in the impact on the environment, it's a waste of carbon, and it's a solution that we as an industry need to solve. And it requires a lot of collaboration and partnership to do it. The brands see the need, right? So you, literally a decade ago, we were thinking about building this plant. I was on the, it was one of my top projects back then in my prior job. We were gonna build it, we we're just starting to do the engineering, but we could not find any market demand that would actually appreciate this value and pay for it. In the last decade, the world has dramatically changed. The sensitivity to this topic has gone up and COVID, unlike the 2008-9 you know, recession, you know, where sustainability got put on the back burner, is now on the forefront. You know, it's more important today than it was 12 months ago around the globe. And so this is a huge opportunity and a huge challenge that we all have to solve. The brands see it. So you can see a lot of brands around the world setting very aggressive goals to have recycled content uh, in their packaging and their products, as well as demanding from all of us to improve our carbon footprint. And so there's many companies out there that are supporting it along with the consumers, you know, requiring it, demanding it of all of, all of us. So when we look at this, you know, the first question is mechanical or cycle, that'll solve the problem. Well, it's a great solution to the problem partially, but it does not solve the entire problem. Mechanical recycling is great. It's a low carbon footprint and it's uh, something that we should do more of as much as possible everywhere we can. But there are limitations. Uh, there are performance and quality issues relative to, you know, the Virgin products um, and there's degradation. So in the end, it can only be, you know, recycled a limited number of times and then it can't be used anymore. 